What's happening at Arconic, ARNC, the maker of engineered products that was created when the old Alcoa broke itself up back in November? When this split was proposed, Arconic was supposed to be the hot division, the high-value-added part of the company that everyone wanted a piece of, while the aluminum business that kept the Alcoa name seemed like kind of a dud. Since the breakup, though, it's been the exact opposite. Alcoa's stock has soared while Arconics barely moved. Meanwhile, some of the company's largest shareholders seem to be in open revolt against CEO Klaus Kleinfeld. In fact, after the close, the activist firm Elliott Management, which already has three board seats, announced they would be nominating five independent directors to the company's board in the fifth slate. And they take particular issue with the leadership of Mr. Kleinfeld and want him replaced with Larry Lawson, the former CEO of Spirit Aerosystems, because, in Elliott's words, quote, Prolonged, disappointing financial results combined with the irreparably damaged credibility of Arconic's current management have created a circumstance whereby Arconic will never approach its potential under the current CEO, end quote. Our interview was taped immediately before this insurgent news broke, but we discussed the potential for a boardroom brawl at length, as well as its earnings, which were essentially in line. So take a close look at our interview with Klaus Klein. Mr. Kleinfeld, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. Good to see you. All right, so Klaus, uh, jet engines, uh, airframe, huge part of the business. How are you feeling about it? Well, um, uh, when you look at our numbers, I mean, revenues are flat, uh, profits are up, margins are up on all segments, balance sheet is strengthened, productivity throughout. So we're clearly making, making good uh, progress here. There's still more to do, and we can do more. Um, the market situation in aerospace um, in 2016 was difficult. We believe that it continues in 2017 on two fronts. One is the destocking on the airframe side and the ramp-up issues uh, on the aero engine side. And we believe that this is going to continue through 2017. You don't think that uh, when you hear Boeing and uh, General Electric and Honeywell say things are getting better, that you could be uh, on their coattails, so to speak? Well, look, it is getting better, um, and we, we are doing our utmost best uh, to, uh, to help on this front. Uh, at the same time, the expectations for the ramp up are also very, very high. Right. Uh, the good news is the order book is full, uh, so there is a lot of work that needs to be done. But at the same time, the technology is a very new technology, and the, the uh, supply chain is a long supply chain, so everybody has to do their job. Uh, it is getting clearly better, uh, but it's work. Autos, staying strong? <laughs> well, w yes, it's, uh, yes. And trucks still weaker. Yeah. Okay. Well, on the automotive front, I mean, we, we think that uh, we have uh, kind of seen a very, very strong environment in, in the U.S. Uh, in the last year. Um, I think most people expect uh, this to stay on this level but not to grow any further. And then when you look at uh, um, heavy-duty trucks and uh, trucks and trailer, uh, we believe that this continues to be a challenge, probably not as challenged as 2016, where we saw a more than 30% drop, but we still believe it's going to drop a little more in, in 2017. All right, now, Klaus, you've uh, midwife the company. You've created a, a division that a lot of people are very excited about, Alcoa. You own 20% of Alcoa. Uh, what would you do with the shares of Alcoa that you own? Is this the uh, time is right to be able to sell that stock, it's at a high, and maybe bring in those proceeds, uh, f maybe fix the debt, uh, situ uh, pay down debt. What would, you, what would be your, your uh, plan? Well, we've said already, I mean, we, we created the 19.9 retained interest because of the situation to make sure that we could go forward with the separation. The separation we did at a time when the commodity prices were very, very low. So the debt carrying capability of Alcoa was very, very low. So therefore, what you see today on the balance sheet of Arconic it is not a normal debt level for an Arconic. Mm -hmm. It is elevated, and we did this to make sure that the separation could happen. At the same time, we retained the 19.9% interest in Alcoa. I'm very happy that uh, we've talked about how optimistic I was all the time on the recreated uh, Alcoa uh, portfolio. I'm very happy to see the commodity prices going up and at the same time also the stock going up and doing, doing well. Um, and we've said publicly, I mean, we have 15 months time here if we wanted to have a tax benefit, if we use it to pay down debt. Uh, and in total, the, the retained interest uh, can be sold in a five years time frame. We look at it uh, when the opportunities are right, look and look at it also what we do with it to get maximum shareholder benefits. We said we're going to use it to, uh, to pay down debt as well as to buy back, buy back shares. But we're going to look at it the moment when we do it and evaluate it at the appropriate time. All right, Klaus. 
headline, Wall Street Journal. Share, shareholder group targets leader of Alcoa spinoff. You have a Feb 5th date to be able to put up a slate. Uh, what do you say to those who challenge your leadership after you split the company up and the company's done well since the split? Well, look, I mean, there has been a lot of shareholder value created already through the separation. If you look at an Alcoa shareholder, they have gained since the separation of roughly 21%. If you look at an Iconic shareholder, compared to the first day of trading, the close of the first day of trading to today, it's more than 19% increase. So I think nobody argues that this was the right, the right move for everybody, you know. At the same time, uh, you also have to see 2016 was a difficult year. Where people are pointing at the at the difficulties that we had in some of the end markets and the underperformance of Firth Rixon. Uh, and we are fixing them. We are getting to them. We're fixing them. We ha we adjusted guidance last year, um, which we basically had to do after what we saw in the marketplace marketplace weakening. We just talked about that, right? So those are some of the frustration. Uh, some of the frustrations. I, you know that we have executed all the time against all the headwinds that ever came against right. us, and we are totally committed to do that. We are focused on getting the operational efficiency up. We are focused on, on getting the margins up, and we are focused are on the, increasing challenge? the capital efficiency. Are you ready efficiency. for a challenge? Are you ready for challenge to your leadership that may even extend to inside the boardroom and out? Are you ready for it? Do you want to stick around for it? You've created a lot of value. Is it time to admit to declare victory and move on? Look, uh, Jim, you know what we have done here uh, in Alcoa to create Alcoa and Iconic to be very, very successful, right? And uh, I have a lot of passion, a lot of energy to drive Iconic to the next level. I fully agree with every shareholder that there is a lot of value to be created and we will get the creation of this value. We've talked intensely with the board. The board has engaged as well as management has engaged with many shareholders. We are very, very open to uh, listen to their feedback and incorporate that into our actions. All right. And how about your meetings with, with President Trump? What have you been able to con convey to him about the uh, state of the aluminum industry in general? Well, Iconic is not so much about the aluminum industry. Right. Iconic really is material agnostic. I mean, that's, by the way, also why we chose a new name. I mean, you know that we are in nickel, we are in titanium, and we are in fabricated goods. I mean, this is an innovation company. This is a technology company. I was uh, very encouraged that the first business day of the new president, he chose to meet for breakfast with a group of manufacturing uh, CEOs here in the U.S. For us, the U.S. is a very, very important place. You know that I have always been very optimistic about the situation in the U.S., mm -hmm. and that's why we put our money there. We spent more than $3 billion. We invested more than $3 billion in the last years in the U.S., and roughly about 60% of our revenues are in the U.S., this is a very, very important market. This is also a place where we employ a lot of our people, 22,000 people here. And I think we can continue to do better. And uh, I was happy to have the president listen to those ideas, how we can do better all together here. Okay, just once again, February 5, the names come in. There will be a challenge, Klaus. What are you going to do? There will be a challenge. Well, look, I mean, we have to look at it, and, uh, and we, as always, the board and, and management are, will engage with, uh, with shareholders. We've done that co uh, continuously. We will listen to what they have to say, and then we will come to a conclusion, you know, what is best. And uh, I hope that this will be a joint agreement and how we go about it. I mean, the, the good thing here is there is a principal agreement that there is a lot of value that be, can, be, can be continued to be created. And uh, I hope that um, this will be possible to do it jointly. All right, let's leave it at that. Klaus Kleinfeld, Chairman and CEO of Arconic. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on Mad Money. Thank you very much, Jim. First quarter for Arconic, okay, in line uh, slightly, but you understand that there are some people who are going to challenge. It's going to be uh, rather rapid in the next six days, so you want to stay tuned. My Chapel Trust owns it, not doing a thing with it, staying long it. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.